to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. Now, in our last episode, we finished up the season with a relatively humbling defeat against Toulouse, which was not exactly how I would have liked to have finished things, but sometimes you don't really get a choice in the matter. However... We did finish a quite solid position in the league, and obviously we got the prize monies and whatnot, and obviously with the new investments coming in, I was very curious to see how much transfer budget we would get. Now, I did look initially at the end of last episode, but unfortunately I would have had to continue for a couple more days, I think, and I didn't want to have to put that in there. So, a little bit of a surprise. I don't know why I said that like I was a little bit of a surprise. So yeah, basically... Um, we have a question of the day as well, what we're talking about. We've got to do that first, of course. If you do have an idea for a question of the day, drop it in the comments with the hashtag QOTD. Question of the day is, who is your all-time favourite player? Can be from Fulham if you want. Lol. Well, yeah, of course it's going to be from Fulham. I'm a Fulham fan. I'm hardly going to choose a uh, Grimsby player. I'm no offence if you're a Grimsby fan. I just can't think of any players on the top of my head at the moment. Um, all-time favourite player. Hmm. So I'm not know. Like it would be someone like Clint Dempsey. It's just like he angered me when he uh, left, as often players do when they leave Fulham, because players mostly leave Fulham. Very few players stay in Fulham long enough to become club legends. Um, but I have to say, someone like Brian McBride. What a legend he was. His lumberjack, fresh-faced looks. Yes, and he was a decent finisher in his day. Um, I think he does a lot of punditry for American television now. I really need to start watching that. I really used to enjoy Brian McBride, basically. <laughs> he was a good guy. Um, so yeah, Brian McBride, bit of an unorthodox choice, but there you go. Right, so yeah, um, we had a transfer budget, and that transfer budget was £12 million. Pounds. Oh, say it with me. Oh, that was... Mm. I saw that and I thought, right, that is a delicious amount of money. Also, it was £12 million pounds and sixty k extra on the... Uh, wage budget too so i was prepared to go out now what i've done basically is what i always do i've gone out on not entirely i have signed a couple of players that are slot straight in um but what i normally do particularly at this stage is i go and look for players from slightly less fashionable countries or players with countries where you can get players cheaper for the same level and i've gone out and i've tried to sign a few sort of decent players that are going to be serving us well in the future basically like i did with carlos ruiz because I the fact is we could sign players that are 25 26 right now and yeah we might get a couple of good seasons out of them and they'll cost us eight million pounds brilliant what i'd much rather do is sign a 17 year old or 18 year old for sort of 500k to 2 million and then get like 10 years out of them and then sell them on for about you know 30 million or something that's sort of the way i play this game because i don't think that with a club like this that i think this is the way you have to do it with the smaller clubs uh, until you get to such point that you can and just start splashing cash kind of like i did with pompey where we kind of bided our time for a while and then when we had we went out and signed people like mamute and santos and got the big boys in basically to sort of take us over the uh take us over the line so that's kind of what i've done uh this time around as well i've still got a little bit of money left and there's a couple more players i'm looking at but for now um yeah i'm just going to show you what we got basically there's a few that i'm I i'm relatively happy actually I, I have to say i'm relatively happy so we've got what have we got here we've got right alan devos has come in on loan from stad rene um now, I didn't actually choose to do this. My director of football did, and that's strange, because I... Mm, he's okay. I mean, he's nothing special, but the fact is, he's the best one they had, it would seem. So I decided to just, you know, agree to the deal in the end once it was already at the point where you could either accept or deny it. So I thought, fuck it, we'll bring him in. Um, we do also have Nicolas Yonvier for a, what, either third or fourth season um, on loan. Because we can. Um, we were offered the chance to bring him in another year, and I thought, why the hell not? He's a solid player. Another year in our midfield could do him some good, and he's done well for us at times last season. He's got some good free kicks on him, so I'm pleased with that. Now, getting into the players that have actually joined us, we're going to go through in no particular order, basically. There's a few three transfers in there, but as you can see, I've actually spent some money on some players, and that's important. Now... I did actually have a look, because um, usually I go straight to Eastern Europe a lot of the time, because the players there, you can generally get decent players, but they're quite cheap in comparison. So a player, that, like a decent striker in, say, Ukraine or Croatia, compared to a decent striker in Spain or Germany, you're talking sort of, you know, 500k to 2 million compared to like 40 million. And it is stupid sometimes, the difference in the prices due to the reputation. However, I went after a couple of players in like Ukraine and that, and they still wanted absurd prices for them, which is weird because I'd never had that problem before. It must be to do with my club rep. Um, but so we had to kind of really pick our way through some players, basically. So first up, we've got a regen here. This is Josip Matas. Um, he's joined us. He's a central defender or defensive midfielder or midfielder. Now, in the end, I probably think that he's actually going to be more effectual as a ball-winning midfielder in the centre here. That's kind of where I intend to play him. Um, his marking's not... That's the one that sort of let-down thing. Everything else, 
you know, can improve. And he is only 16, remember. So for me, he's got a long way to go as far as improvements go. But I think he could be one for the future for us. Joseph Matas, and he's nice and versatile. So he can play as a central defender if we so desire that him to play there. So there we go. That's Joseph Matas. Next up, we've got... Um, we're gonna go, actually, no, we're going to do it now. This is Sally Uchan. Uh, now, apologies if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. And if you do know how to pronounce his name correctly, uh, put it in the comments, like a phonetic spelling, because I do want to get it right, because I always forget how to pronounce the Cs with the little anchor at the bottom of them. So... The only reason I brought him in, basically, is because he was available. And this is a little bit like um, Alberto Cherry in the sense that I saw him on the transfer market, not the transfer market, on the free agents list, and thought, why is he on the free agents list? We seem to be able to get at least one of these every year that are relatively young, still have a little bit more potential to go, and are really solid players. Let's, put, let's not beat around the bush here. He can play in centre mid, and he can play further forward as a sort of playmaker kind of role. And... I can't deny it. Look at this. He's a good, good player. Um, yeah, he's on quite a fair amount of money because he's a solid player. We got him from Roma, after all, I think. Or rather, I think that was the last team he played for. Uh, no, he was on loan at Fenerbahce. Or was he? Was he on loan at Roma? I, don't, I get confused. Um, so, yeah, that's Sally Uchan. If that is how you pronounce his name, I do not know. Um, so, yeah, really, really solid player. And I think he's one that's he's one of the ones that's going to slot straight in. Uh, he's a free transfer. Obviously, it's cost us some in wage and some agent fees, about a million quid, I think, in the end, it deducted from our transfer funds. Also, I was able to negotiate with the board because they gave me our season objectives and they were very kind. We either had attempt to avoid relegation, avoid relegation, or mid-table. Now, attempt to avoid relegation was what we were set to, £12 million. Now, if we avoided it and said that we would, we'd get £16 million. Pounds. So I went for that. Um, mid-table one wasn't much more i don't know why it didn't go up much more but it didn't so we've got a little bit more money on top of that and the club is in a really solid financial situation at the moment so that is very very pleasing and we're doing everything right it seems in terms of managing the finances and getting this club slowly but surely you know it's going to take us a few seasons in league r before we can really start to challenge for anything but you know some of these young players that are coming through are going to be good players we've also had some big bids for players like alberto cherry there's no denying that um genoa eventually came back three times their final bid and i was so close to accepting it but i just thought no we need to sort of push on i don't want to be selling young players like this too early they eventually there was 17 million uh was the bid in total that was like 2 million up front another 10 million and then another 5 million you know how it works so there was that um but in the end i just thought nope we're gonna keep him we're gonna go um now just so you don't think i'm signing loads of players from outside the country um trying to get too many foreign players that's not what i'm trying to do it's just unfortunately french players are expensive and i don't want to be spending all of my money on like one player basically although i've kind of done that into some yeah we'll show you in a minute um but corentin poirier um who has a delightful mustache at the age of 15 i mean oh that's like tom Selleck kind of moustache that is glorious also apologies if things popping up in the bottom corner of my screen i uh I had to flush my Steam config the other day because stuff wasn't working and unfortunately it's reset all my settings. Um, so this is Corentin Poirier. We got him in from a Jasio. Now, we were able to do that basically because they were a lower division side to, compared to us. And, you know, we paid the... Uh, What's it, the compensation thing and I think he's going to be a solid fullback uh, at some point for us he is still only 15 he's gone straight into our youth academy he's one for the future basically a lot of these are of course next up is one that could probably do a bit of both this is Gaston Sosa now he again we, I'm really trying to bolster this area because we do have four players that are always on the pitch in that which means that we want at least six or seven really solid ones in the squad and this is Gaston Sosa um Argentinian. Uh, we brought him in. Who did we bring him in from? I can't even remember the name of the team. Uh, yeah, CAI de Schubert. Um, strange one, but 1.9 million. I'm not going to knock it. It's a really solid deal for us, I think, personally. He, again, has a lot of potential, and he's still only 18. He's on a decent length contract. Um, he's got an optional extension on that as well. Uh, I always try to negotiate those into the deals just to make it a little bit easier for me. And it means we can keep them a lower money for longer if we have to. Um, so there you go. A thousand pound a week for Gaston Sosa. It looks pretty solid to me. Um, next up is another free transfer one that I was just sort of trying to bolster our strike options, basically. And this is Gonzalo uh, Paciencia. Uh, again, Apologies if it's wrong. But he has really solid stats across the board, basically. Um, he's more of a false nine type of player. But the fact is, for an advanced forward, he's still very, very good. Look, nothing stands out as being poor here. Uh, his balance is a little bit low. Um, but the point is, he's still really, really solid. Dribbling, finishing, first touch, heading, passing. Everything's really solid, basically. And I think that's going to be good for us. Having him in the team, too. Now, we are going to have to be careful balancing him and Cherry because they're both key players. And that could be a bit problematic for us. But I just feel that there's no way in hell that Alberto Cherry's not going to get injured this season. He's already been injured twice in preseason and has missed a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, it's good to have a player like Paciencia that can come in and try to boost things up for us. Again, decent money he's on. But I'm sure we could sell him off for more in the future. He's one to slot straight in, and I'm really, really pleased with him. Nothing, like, 
stupidly good stats, but all of his stats are right in that yellow zone, and that's that's where I like it. Um, so yeah, that's another player brought in. And finally, Ryan Phillips. Now, I'm a little bit unsure on this one. Um, he was released by... Who was he released by? Was it Derby? No. Of course, it was, it was Everton. It was another player I was looking at that was released by Derby. Um, he'd done some loan spells. But for me, he's got potential. He really, really does. Now, I had to get him on five grand a week, which is a lot for a 19-year-old that probably isn't going to feature immediately. Um, but I still feel that he's got the potential to slip in. Now, I didn't get him because he's English. I saw him and I thought, these... He has some decent stats. Now, he's very specific to the roles he plays. As you can see, a lot of stats are a bit of a letdown for him, but his determination is good. His teamwork is solid. Um, his physicals still probably could do with a bit more of a boost, but the ones that are important for the central defensive work are actually fairly solid. Jumping reach, strength, stamina and such. Uh, marking, tackling, solid. Heading, good. He's got a way to go yet, but I still think there's potential in this lad as well. That's the sort of the final one. Now... I've made one other deal, basically, or I'm certainly looking at it. And oh no, I'm sorry, I've made one other deal, but I don't know where he, he's not appearing there. Is it because he's not? Uh, here we go, Urgent Aslan. I don't know why he wasn't appearing. I, don't, I think it's because he's not signed for us yet. Um, he won't be signing for us just yet. I don't know when he. When does he sign for us? Is it in here? Yeah, he's joining Paris FC in September. Now, ignore his face for a second because it is pretty strange. This is Urgent Aslan. Now. He's cost us like £7 million, pounds, and that is a lot, I will admit, particularly for a 17-year-old. Uh, but he looks good. For a 17-year-old, some of those stats are phenomenal. Now, the point about him is like, he's got decent potential, it would seem. My scout is still only sort of 80% on him, but I had to go ahead with the deal because I thought we might lose him otherwise. Now, he looks like the sort of player that could possibly slot in immediately and then get better, and that's the perfect player for us. Now, I did sign him obviously because of that, but also the fact that he's called fucking Aslan. I mean, we've... Oh, the reference... My reference game is going to be strong. So, C.S. Lewis fans, keep your ears open for any little references there. I really want to sign, like, Juan Sebastian Veron, and then, like, um... Oh, what's he called? Papa Booba Dio. So then we could have the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That would be one hell of a midfield pairing. Um, pairing? Trio. Except Veron would, of course, be up front. So, and if you understood that joke, I'm glad. Now, yeah, so that's Urgent Aslan too. Again, another player that I'm really excited about bringing in, and I think he's going to be really... I think he can be one of those ones that leading lights for the future he can play up top as well which is very very useful um very very pleased indeed there's a couple more players i'm looking at but we'll come to that when i've sort of completed the actual signings of them uh, in the next episode so that brings us to today and we are playing against stad khan or con as i'm told it's actually pronounced we played a lot of preseason friendlies as you can see uh some against big size to try and get some money in too which I think went well. We've made a couple of million quid out of those, doing them away from home. And if that's a tip for you, do if you can, and you've not got that much money, do friendlies against big sides away from home. You'll get an absolute buttload. Right, now, I'm going to have to get this going sharpish because I need to nip out for a bit after I've recorded this. So, let's jump into the game today. Um, now, I'm not sure how many of these players are actually going to get into our team immediately, but we'll have to see, actually, because it obviously depends on match fitness and whatnot. And I'm wondering if Alberto Cherry is actually going to be good enough in terms of his match fitness to come straight in. Now, <clears throat> no, this is what I mean. <clears throat> see, he's played some reserve games lately. And unfortunately, his match fitness is still quite low. So it looks like it's going to be a first start for Gonzalo Paciencia. Pereira's in there. Saleh Uchan's in there. Gate and Yonvier, of course. Bulens, of course, is going to be... Um, he's sort of, that's the weak link for us, that defensive midfield position, for now, because he is yet to really develop. But I think another season and he'll be solid for us. 10, Oban, Mustafa King, Cantini, and Sieglist on the bench. Fripp, Fripp, Frick, Philippe, Devos, Cherry, Mba, Mvia, and Antelek. Now, we've got plenty of other options off the bench as well. Don't you worry about that. Carlos Ruiz is injured, unfortunately, so he'll be back soon, I hope. So we can get him straight in, because I do think that I'm going to slowly start transitioning him and Cantini over this season. So, <clears throat> apologies for my voice there it's uh <coughs> still quite early in the morning one sec guys <coughs> right apologies right there we go <laughs> jesus christ right um so let's go i was actually playing this transfer window in bed last night now on my crappy old laptop because obviously with steam stream it makes it much much easier so i could just sit there in bed doing transfers and that was great because it meant i could take a bloody long time over it and i think we've got some pretty decent deals out of it um i'm curious to see what aslan's like once we get the full picture of him when he's actually joined the club but for now i'm, I'm fairly happy with him i think he could be a midfield linchpin for for years to come for us i hope um as you can see some of the uh graphics are again a little bit larger than normal because obviously i've been doing it on my laptop which has a weird screen uh peta 10 there out wide to johan bulens Sally Uchan, go on, son. Round the corner for Per... Oh, and Pereira making the run from midfield there, nearly making it 1-0 to Paris FC. Now, 
we're predicted to finish 19th this season and I think we've got way more in us than that Pereira oh, that's poor from him um I'm curious to see what Paciencia does you know he and Alberto Cherry I nearly got rid of Alberto Cherry but my um the only reason I didn't was because my coach told me that Paciencia is slightly injury prone and I don't really trust us having to rely on him for a full season. I'd much rather have two really solid players uh, that we can sort of alternate when one gets injured and whatnot. That way they'll both stay happy, essentially, uh, because one's always going to be on the injury room. And that's kind of the way that's going to work. And if we find that we get ourselves in a more uh, comfortable position, then we can, of course, sell one off for a massive money. Because remember, they both signed on free transfers. Yonvier, Gape. Lots of lovely work here. Pereira, can he find a ball through? He can. Paciencia, and that is a really, really poor finish from him. We're going to need a bit better out of him than that. But from what I've seen so far, we're actually looking quite good here away from home. We've had some solid away wins with this team so far. Uh-oh. Basile. Come on, guys. Don't do not do the whole silly bullshit with your fullbacks getting out of position. Oh, that's a relatively poor effort as well, actually. Has to be said. I just want to make sure that this season we're sort of consolidating ourselves, getting another solid mid-table finish, despite what the board think. Uh, Cantini, with the strike, with the goal, it's 1-0 to Paris FC, and that is beautiful. Sebastian Cantini, now that's the thing. If we face him out of the team to bring Carlos Ruiz through, because Carlos Ruiz, I feel, has probably got a better level of potential overall, but we would be missing this, and... I think at some point we're going to need to look for a player that isn't the best player in our team, but one that is going to be a dead ball specialist. And Cantini for now fills that role quite nicely because, my God, can he take one. But Yonvier is pretty good with that too. But look at the, their stats are actually only like 11s and 12s. I want sort of 15s and 16s for set pieces. Um, I want a player that's got that kind of thing in his locker. I want to see what Salah Uchan can do today. The new boys, basically, I'm very curious about their performances. Pereira around the corner for Paciencia, and that is looking offside, I think. Uh, no, okay, he's not offside. I thought he was offside. Gonzalo Paciencia with his first goal for the new club, and they've played quite well so far, and we're actually doing quite well. Gape here into Pereira. Oh, it was the fullback playing him on it. It's a great finish from Paciencia, and it is 2 0 to Paris FC. What a start! Oh, immediate equaliser, probably. Basile, and that's surely not. Oh, come on, goalkeeper. I wish he'd have. I hate that. It's annoying. Because the goalkeeper just didn't seem to react once the ball was brought down here. Lovely bit of play from. Baziel, but look at this, he's backing away from, I, I don't really, the AI for the goalkeepers is really atrocious, isn't it? <laughs> just It just really is. But we got a 2-1, we got a 2-1 lead now, which is slightly better, but hey, these guys are a decent side, and the fact that we're actually one goal up away from home is very, very pleasing. Now, we've not been the best, we've obviously allowed them a few chances, I don't know if that's a lot of long shots or not, that could be the reason. Uh, it could just be that they've had a lot of long shots so far. Um, we're just going to have to go for what we're doing in the second half. Uh, where's the long shot stat? No, they've only had three. They're actually doing pretty well so far today, I have to say. But we've taken our chances and scored two goals. So if we can get away with... Oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> In the very first fucking game. Um, he's only picked up a knock. But the fact is, I know this guy's injury prone. So the last thing I'm going to do is risk him um, for the rest of this. Particularly in the game that we're actually winning. So we'll get Alberto Cherry on and sort of change up the dynamic a little bit. You know, maybe you know, a bit stronger in the air. Um, okay. We don't want a more direct approach. I know that that would probably enable us a bit more with regard to um, Alberto Cherry's... Oh, can he get in behind here? No, he can't. Pereira. Oh, space. Cherry's... Oh, poor, poor ball. Pereira. Can he get the ball back to him? Will he go alone? He will. Good strike on the rebound. Pereira. It's 3-1 to Paris FC. Quinton Pereira. We've started this season. Lovely stuff. This is brilliant. An away win on the opening day is exactly what I needed. Pereira just ghosts past his man, gets in a good position, strikes it. Goalkeeper makes the save, but Pereira follows it in. And on the rebound, makes it 3-1 to Paris FC. And surely now, we are in a really strong position to win this game. I'm not going to, you know, jinx it just yet, but I'm pretty pleased with that. Now, is there anyone else? Dominic Gapes on a booking. And I'd prefer not to get him sent off. Let's give Alan... Uh, I can never remember where he was going to play for us. Ball winning midfielder. Okay. Uh, in that case, it's perfect to bring him on for Gape then. Because that's that role, basically. So we'll get Alan Devos on for a little while. Or Devo. I don't quite know how to pronounce it. It's probably one of those. Um, let's make one last change, I think. Because Jan Vier is also looking slightly worse for wear in terms of his... Uh, uh, condition, so we'll get him off as well. I think we should be able to see this out now. We've got nine minutes to go, 3 1 to the good. Even if we were to concede a goal, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for us right now. Um, well, it, it would be bad, but it wouldn't be catastrophic for us. And it does look like we're actually going to get over the line here with a 3 1 victory and three really solid goals for us today. And I, I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, I've just noticed that Marseille have scored seven against Nancy. That's quite a result. Um, I don't know how well the new boys have done today, but Paciencia got a goal, so we can always look at that as a good sign. I'm not sure quite how the other new boys did. Let's just have a little gander here. Um, so, why is that not in... 
Wow. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Paciencia got a 7.6. Uchan only a 6.7. We need a little bit more out of him. Hopefully we can sort of find the best position for him. And no one else was a new boy, were they? Devos only played a little while, but he's still got 6.7. So that's a good performance for us. Really, really solid. More like that. And we should be absolutely fine this year. and might even be able to challenge for the top half if we can get enough good wins coming up. We've got some more winnable games against Lorient and Reem, so you never know. Now, um, PSG, we do have some fixtures against them, of course. Now, it won't be the next episode, but the one after that will be our first game against PSG, which I believe is the one in the Parc de Prince, the away one. So expect uh, fireworks in that one. So that's how things are looking after one day. We are fourth in the league and off to a really solid start, I've got to say. So in the next episode, I was thinking probably do the... Ooh, hang on, how many games? is that that would only be four and that would yeah okay so we'll do montpellier at home and then we'll do uh paris saint germain away in the one after that so guys if you like what you're seeing please do drop a like on the video and if you've liked it even more than that please subscribe to my channel for more outcasts to icons and from the shadows in your inbox every other day at the moment at seven o'clock and i will see you guys in the next episode for a massive game hopefully against montpellier let's see how we do by the time we get there i'll see you guys soon thanks for watching Bye bye